For we walk by faith, not by sight. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. These words might seem simple at first glance, but living them out can be much tougher. It requires tremendous courage and strength. You must be willing to be misunderstood and even abandoned. You must be willing to give up any control over your life that you thought you had. You must be willing to look like a complete fool. Yet, it is a journey of tremendous blessing and reward. It is a journey that is exciting, life-altering, and mind-boggling. It is a journey that will allow you to see and experience God as He was meant to be experienced, in all His fullness and grace. What does it look like to walk by faith and not by sight? It means stepping into the unknown, trusting that God will reveal the way as you move forward in obedience. Look at Abraham, who left his homeland without knowing his destination, simply because God told him to go. Genesis 12, 1. Walking by faith means clinging to the dreams God has planted in your heart, even when circumstances suggest otherwise. Consider Joseph, who held on to his God-given dreams despite being betrayed, sold into slavery, and imprisoned for crimes he didn't commit. Genesis 37, 50. Walking by faith requires a strong determination to follow God's plan, no matter what life throws your way. Daniel exemplified this resolve by refusing to defile himself with the king's food, staying true to God's commandments. Daniel 1, 8. Walking by faith means having the courage to stand up for the hurting, the broken, and the downtrodden, even if it means facing death yourself. Look at Esther, who risked her life to save her people. Esther 4.16 you might have to look foolish to the world. Think of Noah building an ark for a flood when it had never even rained on earth. Think of Abraham clinging to God's promise that he would be the father of many nations, despite being childless at 100 years old. Think of Moses standing before the Israelites in the wilderness, declaring that they would eat meat until it was coming out of their nostrils even though he had no idea where that meat would come from. Think of Joshua marching around the walls of Jericho, trusting in God's plan even when it made no sense. Walking by faith means trusting God beyond what our eyes can see. It's believing in His promises even when our circumstances seem to contradict them. It's standing firm in the face of adversity, knowing that God is with us. It's living in obedience, even when we don't have all the answers. And it's in this journey of faith that we truly experience the fullness and grace of God, who is always faithful and always true. If you choose to walk by faith, you must be ready to step out of your comfort zone, leaving behind the familiar and embracing the unknown. Be prepared to let God shake up your world, turning it upside down to fulfill His divine purpose. Release God from the confines of the neat little box you've placed Him in and let Him show up in unexpected ways. Perhaps He will call you to foster or adopt children, leave your job to become a missionary, or trade worldly comforts for heavenly treasures. Or maybe the journey won't be as neat and socially acceptable. Your world might be turned upside down by trials like adultery, divorce, infertility, addiction, or the heartbreak of a prodigal child. Whatever the challenge, if you surrender it to God, He will transform it for His glory. God will take you on a journey, teaching you to walk by faith and entrusting you with life's most treasured moments. He will build a mountain-moving faith in you, teaching you to live with abandon and walk in His fullness and grace. He will prepare you to be used mightily for His glory. Perhaps you've already experienced life being turned upside down, feeling lost and weary. You've lost friends who don't understand your faith and are tempted to settle for less than God's best. But remember, you are not alone. 
God is raising a remnant of believers who will be obedient, no matter the cost. He seeks those with clean hands and pure hearts who will cling to His promises despite seeming hopelessness. Be strong and courageous, my friends. God has specifically chosen you to be part of His faithful remnant. He is molding you, testing your faith, and refining you through trials. Remember, the fire will purify you, not burn you. He is with you every step of the way, carrying you, supporting you, and assuring you that He remains in control, even when life seems chaotic. God is teaching you to trust Him deeply, so He can accomplish something greater than you've ever imagined. Ephesians 3, 20, 21. He is guiding you to surrender your heart, soul, and life to Him. Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. By walking in the Spirit daily, you open yourself to greater works through His power. John 14, 12. He is preparing you to be a beacon of light and hope in a world desperately needing to see Jesus. No matter where you are on your journey of faith, I urge you to surrender completely. Let God transform your life, pain, and loss into something glorious for His purpose. Step out of your comfort zone, walk on the water, and keep your eyes fixed on Him. It's a decision you will never regret. The Bible calls us to walk by faith and not by sight. This journey requires daily commitment beyond the emotional highs of sermons or encouragement. Embrace faith over sight and trust that God is at work, even when circumstances suggest otherwise. Today, I want to encourage you, not because you're failing in your Christian walk, but to inspire you to overcome. I want to encourage you to walk by faith and not by sight every day. Let's look at 2 Corinthians 5, 7, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Paul shared this with the Corinthian church to assure them of the truth that when we depart from this life, we are present with the Lord. This isn't something we perceive with our physical senses. It's a reality we accept by faith. This principle applies to our entire Christian life, not just our belief in heaven. Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, Hebrews 12.2, exemplified walking by faith. He endured the cross, looking beyond its shame, focusing on the joy that awaited him when he redeemed mankind. Hebrews 12.2 says, We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. How do we walk by faith? To understand this, we first need to know where faith comes from. Romans 10.17 says, so faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ. Many assume Paul refers to the scriptures here. But remember, before the invention of the printing press in 1450 AD, Bibles were rare and hand-copied. So if faith came only from reading the Bible, then the majority of Christians would have been excluded from having faith. Paul is talking about hearing Jesus, the Word of God, John 1.1.14, 1, 1, 1 John 5.7, 1 Peter 1.23, Hebrews 4.12. Faith comes when we hear, and hearing comes when Jesus speaks. Jesus said his sheep would hear his voice. Faith arises in us when we hear Jesus speak. You will know it when it happens. Faith will arise in your innermost being. Now, walking by faith begins with taking action. Think about it. Just like a child learning to walk, there will be missteps and falls. We may get ahead of ourselves or miss things, but we must start by taking that first step. Next, it's crucial to know where you are going. Paul reminded the Corinthian church of their eternal destination. Similarly, we need to keep the bigger picture in focus. The Lord has given me a vision of a city on a hill, 
my eternal destination. While I may not see every turn, I know I am heading in the right direction. When walking by faith, keeping your final destination in sight prevents distractions and ensures you stay on course. As we continue this journey, we must be prepared to face opposition. If something is truly from God, expect opposition. Jesus faced opposition from Satan, religious leaders, and the Roman Empire. Similarly, well-meaning friends, family, or other Christians may challenge your faith journey. Don't expect smooth sailing. Instead, be prepared to face and overcome opposition. Lastly, we need to ride out the emotional roller coaster. Many believe that if something is from God, they won't face negative emotions. Look at Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. He was so distraught that he sweated drops of blood. He still walked forward in faith. In your journey of faith, you will encounter discouragement, but always remember the greatness of your God. Don't let today's emotions rob you of what God has for you tomorrow. If God spoke to you, walk by faith, not by sight, regardless of opposition or emotional highs and lows. In the end, know that walking by faith requires taking the first step, keeping your destination in focus, expecting opposition, and enduring emotional challenges. If you truly heard from God, then walk by faith, not by sight. God bless you. By subscribing, you become a vital part of our mission to spread the word of God and uplift countless lives. Join us in making a positive impact. Hit that subscribe button now.